hi guys welcome back to my channel and if you're new here my name is Hannah Renee and it is so nice to meet you and this is Young Womanhood 101 where I share about healthy lifestyles self-care and taking care of your home so if you like that type of content make sure to subscribe today I'm gonna share all the books I read in 2023 I entered my reading era again and I want to share my favorites with you so without further ado let's just jump right on into this video so the first book that I finished this year is the summer I turned pretty number one by Jenny Han I read this book because the show came out so I watched the show first and then read the book and I'm kind of sad that I did that. I wished I would have read this first. I feel like my opinion was a little bit skewed because the book is not necessarily the same as the show, but I still thought it was good. It's about this girl who goes to this summer beach house with her mom's best friend's family. So it's her mom, her brother, and then her mom's best friend and her two boys. So there's four kids, two moms, and they spend the summers there. And now that she's grown up, there's a little bit of a love triangle happening with the brothers. And that's pretty much it. That's what it's about. So if you like cheeky, cheesy teenage romance, that's kind of what this is. I like it. I don't like living it. I like it as entertainment. So recommend this book for sure. Book number two of the year. I finished this in January. It starts with us by Colleen Hoover. This one is the second book. The first one is It Ends With Us. It's very popular. You probably read it. But It Ends With Us was really hard for me because of the heavy sensitive topics that were included. I did have one night where I could not stop thinking about it and I was just tossing and turning because I was so distraught. This one is about the reconciliation and healing of the trauma from the first book. So this one's lighter, a little bit happier. Healing is definitely messy, so there is some conflict in here, but it talks about the healing from the first book. I don't want to get too much into it, but if you do want to read it, I would read some reviews beforehand about it ends with us so you kind of know what you're getting into i rated this one four out of five stars book number three i finished in february malibu rising by taylor jenkins reed this was my first taylor jenkins reed book that i rated four out of five stars i thought this book was really good it follows four siblings that kind of were forced into the spotlight because of their father and him being this famous actor it talks about these four siblings having this giant party and at the end of the night the house that the party was at is burned down to the ground so the book leads up to what happened before the big fire and it's cool to see how everything is intertwined with the siblings and the timeline of everything i thought it was really creative it's a very good book so four out of five stars i enjoyed this one this is one of my favorite books of all time. I've actually read it before, so I read it for a second time. I finished this one in March. This is Emotionally Healthy Spirituality by Peter Scazzaro. I believe that's how you say his name. Most of the time we don't deal with our emotional health and we just become a Christian and do the right things, but we don't actually deal with the things that are going on on the inside and heal those things to look more like Christ. I read it very slowly. I read it over six months and I try to do that on purpose because I want to soak in everything that this book has to share. So if you do want to read this book, actually you should by far, you should read this book. But if you do read it, I recommend giving yourself time to do it over a period of time. But this is five stars, six stars for me. I will reread this forever. This is The Inheritance Games by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. I finished this in April. This is a four and a half stars for me. I love the mystery behind this book and the problem solving aspect. This is about this random girl named Avery that gets the inheritance of someone that she's never met and he's a billionaire or he was a billionaire. So now she suddenly becomes a billionaire 
and she has no idea why this random man gives her this inheritance. So it's all about solving that little mystery. It's a series, so it will continue to unfold and I'm very excited about it. But I love this series and I can't wait to read more of it. So recommend the inheritance games so good emily henry is quickly becoming my favorite author this is book lovers by her i rated this five stars easily i love her books and i'm just obsessed with this one this book is about these two authors that end up finding themselves together in a small town in north carolina their paths end up crossing they end up working on some books together and it's just a little romance that forms there. I loved this so much. I felt like I related to the main character Nora a lot just being type A personality and being so structured so I really enjoyed that and I ate this up. I finished it in only two weeks which is pretty good for me so finished that in April. Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid was pretty interesting I think I only rated it three and a half stars but I think I grew to like this book and the concept more when I watched the show I finished this right around the time that the show came out this year so I finished it in May and I think I started to like it when I had character faces to go along with the character in the book but it follows this girl who is a singer songwriter trying to make it big in LA and she crosses paths with this band that is desperately in need of a girl singer like her and she ends up joining their band and it's about all of the rock and roll drama that goes on with a band like this as they go on tour. I probably am not the audience for this. I didn't really like the sex, drugs, rock and roll type. I still enjoyed the character development and the plot for this book. So three and a half stars for me. This is book number two of the summer I turned pretty. It's called It's Not Summer Without You by Jenny Han. I finished this in June and this one talks a little bit more about grief and transition, life transitions with the families that I mentioned earlier <laughs> with the first book. So it's definitely more real, not as cutesy as the first one, but the love triangle still continues in this, which I love. So I definitely will keep going with this series because I think it's fun. I rated this four out of five stars. This is Beach Read by Emily Henry. Of course, I finished this in July. I love this book, four and a half stars for this one. I totally realize that I mixed up the plots of book lovers and beach read. I'm so sorry. So this one is where they end up in this beach town and their paths cross and they write different books, but kind of together. And then there's a little love story. Book lovers is about this girl that goes on a sister trip to another little cute town in North Carolina and they meet this editor and things unfold as their paths cross obviously so a little bit different but she does like to write about authors so you can see that premise there I do love Emily Henry books I just eat them up so four out of five stars for me on that one sorry I got the synopsis mixed up I read book lovers a little bit ago we were liars by E Lockhart this one actually took me a while. It took me, I finished it in September. I started in July, finished in September. It was very slow at the beginning, I will say that. But once I sat down and read a good chunk of it, I finished it in one day. It is so well written. It's eerie, mysterious. It's about this rich family that goes to this island every summer and they spend the summers there. There's a bunch of kids that hang out together and it's following this main character who's a little girl but there's a dual timeline almost and you see her in the future talking about some accident that happened a few summers before and so you're trying to figure out what the mysterious accident 
accident is and once you figure it out it's so creepy but it wasn't like thriller creepy it was like just eerie mysterious and I can handle that so I rated this four out of five stars it was a good summer read but it took me a while to get into at the beginning next one is the ballad of songbirds and snakes by Suzanne Collins I took off the cover because all my other Hunger Games books don't have the cover so I wanted it to match and I rated this one three stars that's actually kind of low. Again, I think when I watched the movie, I was like, this is fantastic. I don't understand why I rated it three stars, but I was really interested in the beginning. This book is three parts. So parts one and two, I was in it. I was excited. But the second part ends on a very anticlimactic note. And then the third part, I was like, what is happening now? Like, I was a little bit confused, but... I still enjoyed it. It follows the life of President Snow and how he came to become President Snow and just his role in the Hunger Games as a whole. If you don't know anything about the Hunger Games, you're going to be confused. You need to read those first, but as someone who grew up reading those, I thoroughly enjoyed this and enjoyed the nostalgia. I think I liked it more when I watched the movie but it left me really eerie at the end. So I had two eerie books in a row. Guess that was just my luck. I finished that one in October too. This is The Hawthorne Legacy by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. Again, finished this in November. I gave this one four and a half stars. I literally couldn't put this book down. I think because of what was set up in number one, The Inheritance Games, it just, made me dive into this and I read it pretty quickly. My only qualm was that it jumped into the mystery again very fast. So it was almost like it was meant to be read back to back and I had a few months in between. So it took me a second to get back into it. But once I did, I really loved it. So can't wait to read the next one of this. But four and a half stars love this is my last book of the year just haven't met you yet by sophie cousins i only rated this one three and a half stars i love cheesy romance novels like this this is like a hallmark movie to me and i do love that however this one I felt like was missing some things. Basically this book follows this journalist who is writing for an online website. She gets sent to this island and she ends up switching suitcases, hence the drawings, with some random stranger and when she looks at the contents of his suitcase she thinks they're meant to be. Meanwhile she's trying to tr track down suitcase guy. She's hanging out with this taxi driver and there's a little bit of a romance going on with the taxi driver so there's like this love triangle happening almost and she has to decide who she wants to be with and i do love that type of stuff obviously i'm a fan of love triangles but my only qualm is it felt like there needed to be 10 more pages at the end because it felt like it was not complete it didn't quite explain everything i just didn't feel satisfied with the details i felt like there needed to be more but other than that good cheesy quirky romance type of book so that's my books for 2023 i'm pretty easy to please when it comes to reading books i've never had a book that i did not finish normally i like most of the books that i read so if you're like me and all of her reviews are really high I'm just having fun and enjoying all of these stories. So that is my wrap up. If you do like this video, like it, comment, just let me know. And I'd love to keep sharing books that I'm reading and do little reading nook, reading time segments as I did previously. And that is all that I have for you. So I will see you guys when I see you next. Bye guys.